So why don't we start with citizenship? citizenship but it's like we know. Yeah, we're, no, that's our... not gonna happen. That's um, and okay. then we're gonna we will be willing to back down to full residency with no voting rights. Yes. Right. For well, Turkish settlers, I was thinking just okay. obviously we like I think realistically giving them residency because they've created families, they've become a part of the society, but not voting rights. Mm. The Turkish side are happy because they feel more comfortable with the troops there, but it's all about that compromise in between of the Greeks do not feel comfortable, obviously, because they're the ones being guarded against. We are energy hungry, and what we want is, you know, yeah. for no, the country not, to be functioning, no, and also to... No, we're talking to, about the real principles economic. here, not the interests. Well, the interests affect our... You know, our principles don't exist independently of our interests. Yeah. We're gathered here today to discuss possible resolutions to the current tensions and factors affecting the process of peace and the region of Cyprus. The only way to have an effective nation in the modern era is to have a strong federal government. A popular sovereignty elected legislature, a popular sovereignty elected presidency. The governmental system of our island is of the utmost importance and must be the first thing addressed by this committee. Not only is this about building one full unified functioning country, it is also about building a country with equal and complete access to opportunity, not one of an oppressive majority or a suppressed minority. There are 20% of the population, which is something that simply cannot be ignored. We can't overrepresent a minority. We have to realize that they are a minority and they must be respected, but we cannot give them 50-50 leadership. But this is a form of democracy and each person gets one vote. And the fact is that there are more Greeks than there are Turkish people. The reality of the situation is the Greek candidates will win in a flat-out democratic system. That system will not guarantee that the minority has representation in government. The minority will be represented as they should be, in proportion to their percentage of the population. To have a true nation where everyone is represented is through popular sovereignty. Right now, our cultures don't mix. We would ask for the Turks to propose a concrete government structure. They have constantly talked about the suppression and how they want to be represented, and now we ask for you to propose an idea. We have a plan. We are two separate cultural entities, and we feel that we should split into two states, each with individual executive branches, each with, each with individually elected presidents, and without an overarching executive branch. What uh, does the Turkish Republic mean by equal representation? Does that mean proportional representation for the amount of population, or equal representation despite the fact that they are minority? We support a bicameral federal legislature. That is to say, this legislature makes makes the laws for all of Cyprus, both the Turkish and the Greek halves. Having two executive branches simply exasperates the divide between our two countries and goes contrary to every single unification statement that the opposition made. We should have a government formed out of the legislature as we would see in a parliamentary system. I think this allows better um, the opportunity for Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriot parties to form coalitions that can then um, create create the executive branch, the prime minister, um, and, all, and the council of ministers from there. I think that would be uh, much fairer to the Turkish Cypriots, while also satisfying the demands of the Greek Cypriots to have a president uh, that's elected directly by the people. We're offering you a president that only caters to your people, that doesn't have to deal with us, that only caters to your people and affects change in the way that you are happy with, that only governs your people. We will have our own president, but what we will be doing is operating as one unit in the way that we wish to without the contention of having to deal with an executive council. We already agreed to give the minority equal representation in one house. This is a negotiation. We already gave up some things. Now it's your turn. I firmly believe that we should potentially entertain an unmoderated caucus or consistently entertain unmoderated caucuses for the day and ask potentially that each delegation from the Greek uh, Cypriots and the Turkish Cypriots divide up their delegations to address each of these issues which have been brought up separately um, in those unmoderated caucuses and then report to their head delegates and then return to a formal session for us to debate those issues further. I think it would be a more productive approach rather than have the whole committee debate each of these topics separately. All those in favor? Now, as the chair of that motion passes, the Prime Minister gets to choose the Supreme Court. Yeah, the 50 50 thing is really bad because if they have the same like powers they have in the US, then they could like rule stuff unconstitutional. I can agree on a Prime Minister based on the way the coalitions play out. Negotiating is not necessarily about being nice or about giving things up. 
you're trying to solve an old problem with old solutions. Think of it as a creative process in which you will build something entirely new. What are the functions of a government? Why do they exist? And it sounds like a very basic question, but you guys are trying to address this. We are going to work together mm -hmm. to put, um, list the issues that are on the table and set a joint agenda for what we should discuss today, over the course of today and tomorrow. We basically, we need to make sure the Turkish shuttlers are protected under the law. They're not going to be discriminated against. They're not going to be shipped out. In order to look at this from a less biased point of view and a more calm point of view, we need to have some sort of trust in the other side. We are, in fact, trying to de-escalate the presence of Turkish troops on the Cypriot, on the Cypriot island. And we believe that in order to expedite this process, we should uh, attempt to assimilate as this minority population into our culture and into our citizenship as fast as possible. So who is a citizen of Cyprus and why they're a citizen of Cyprus is an important question to answer, but also what rights and obligations do these citizens have? The citizens are joint, are, are united by their mutual interests, which incentivize them to enter into a social contract with the government. Okay, so we need to establish what that is. So I think voting rights is definitely something reserved only for what they're calling citizens. Vote for a 10 minute moderated caucus for 30 seconds speaking time on the rights of citizens and non citizens. All those in favor? Who dies the chair that does the majority? We believe that anyone born in Cyprus should automatically be a citizen, and then anyone else would have to apply for citizenship. Perhaps expediting the process for the Turkish settlers? They will not get an expedited process. They will simply have the equal rights of any other immigrant. They will have to equally apply for citizenship. The Greeks that are residents in the country already have an expedited process because Greece is part of the EU and so is Cyprus. And in this way, having the Turkish settlers uh, get an expedited process actually evens the playing field. I do agree that there should be an expedited way for them to become citizens with such a large minority present. Your goal is sustainability, not just the compromise, as many of you would like to use the word, of the today and the demographics of a current time period, but more so how do you get that sustainability where 50 years down the road, 100 years down the road, there is a connection between the populace and the people who are representing them. And the key words, I think, from what Simon just said was policies that affect that. What permanent residency means is they have to pay taxes, they have social welfare, and they do not have voting rights. So we don't need it to exist. They have social security and they have taxes. That's it. Oh, what? So we're agreeing on a permanent residency process, an expedited process, and the Turkish military to leave and stop encouraging settlers if this whole treaty is agreed on. Yes. Yes. Um, okay. And great. I don't great. At this point, it is, it is more about our impression. Additionally, we have arrived at a um, agreement with Turkey. Yeah, Turkey is extremely happy to hear that uh, these Turkish settlers would be pretty protected. Turkey and Cyprus have a good relationship. We will pull our troops out of um, Cyprus, once all this is signed and agreed upon. Are you saying that to gain permanent residency, they would have to be in the country for 20 years? Or to gain citizenship, they would have to be in the country for 20 years? Anyone who has been living in Cyprus already and is not a citizen already of one of the two states, but has been living there for 20 years already, will be granted permanent residency. The definition of which is that they pay taxes and get social benefits, but they cannot vote. So I'm wondering why we need to make them permanent residents before we give them citizenships. And the reason for that is to benefit the Turks and the Greeks who are not able to become citizens so that they will still be able to pay taxes and get benefits but not have voting rights. Mediators will not negotiate uh, with anyone in your delegations besides the head delegate or anyone who has been indicated to us by the head delegate to be uh, an appropriate representative of your delegations. This is to ensure that we get a clear message, that the international community gets a clear message from your groups, uh, and we hope that you understand and you will take, make the necessary adjustments to respect our wishes here. I think the mediators have clearly laid out a problem which is very uh, evident in this committee, and that is that there's a diversity of opinion on each side, and therefore we are perhaps going around in circles.
you can't just start from the U.S. framework and think that that's the way to build a federal government. There was an act not too long ago, this was a Supreme Court case, that was the national government wanted to regulate guns that were brought onto school campuses. That was ruled unconstitutional because that is not a power for the federal government to have. That is a state's decision for states to determine whether guns should be permitted onto these school campuses or not, or how you would ban that. And state legislatures can make those type of determinations and pass laws themselves. So it's not a matter of can you have the law or not, but who decides that. The process and the journey is far more important than the destination. It's very important that Cyprus comes together to harness these natural resources, including oil and natural gas, to not only increase foreign trade with uh, the EU and the US, but to also boost the economy of Cyprus as a whole. What is the definition of equality in this case? Is it monetary or is it, is it just a simple division of numbers or is it um, in raw goods? How, how do we distribute this revenue equally? Uh, you know, there's the question of infrastructure and also um, the distinct, distinctly different needs of the two societies currently in Cyprus. How are we going to move forward and you know, deal effectively with these differences and make sure that they are satisfied? Guaranteed Giving the money to the federal government or a commission formed by the federal government does not guarantee equal distribution between these two states, obviously. We are not asking for equal distribution. We realize that this is your resource in the majority based on land mass. We just want to okay. guarantee that we won't be cut out of something that in the past we have been cut out of, which is the oil business. <laughs> we want to guarantee that we will you be given a proportional amount of money, which is 20 so what are you proposing as the best way to do that? Build a pipeline through, through Turkey, work with the Greeks in terms of developing those resources. Greece was not really a player to begin with in all sorts. Uh, thank you. The Turkish delegation is using their occupation of this sovereign nation as a bargaining chip in gaining this oil, which is absolutely ridiculous. We just want to ensure that Turkey will have drilling rights in this area. You know, not obviously like at Cyprus's borders, but I believe, uh, but up to the halfway point. If we reevaluate the contracts with both the United States and Turkey, and we find both contracts to be undesirable to our situation today, and we eliminate both contracts, we no longer have the resources. Yeah. No one no, has the true. resources to drill in the region. Okay. Nothing's agreed upon until, until everything is right. agreed upon. Right, okay. You know what I think would, would further the discussion policy. is if we were to really understand what it is that each party seeks. many of you are aware of, we also came to a conclusion on how we would decide the budget. And now with property rights, we are definitely on the right path to creating peace in Cyprus. And in addition, Greece would... Get rights to enrichment of this drawing. We will also be pulling our military out of northern Cyprus. And we are now resuming with the last day of the Cyprus peace process negotiations. Under the 1960 Treaty of Guarantee, Great Britain, the United Kingdom, was guaranteed the rights and the sovereignty over these areas. And if this is an issue of contention, the United Kingdom will see that as a failure of the Cypriot people and its government to fulfill its international obligations under the 1960 Treaty of Guarantee. Britain has bases in there. It, Turkey was, um, you might refer to it as a, a hostile occupation. Uh, Britain has not always been a peaceful, uh, idle being just sitting there with their military bases. They did, in fact, take over Cyprus for some amount of time. <laughs> to take those bases away would not only revoke the Treaty of Guarantee, which you have signed with the United Kingdom, with Greece, and with Turkey, but would also undermine the, inter the system of international security which the UK is proud to be a part of and which the UK hopes that the United Republic of Cyprus would indeed be a part of as well. However, we do believe that there can be some sort of renegotiation considering we are creating a new country. It is fundamentally against the laws of sovereignty to have a nation be continuously meddled with by international powers.
You know, my interest is having Cyprus be a stable nation, not necessarily to have an imperial force there. And clearly the UK has imperial interests. Yeah, and also negotiation. The UN exists and the EU exists to serve its member states, so let's just not forget that! <laughs> but not In Clause 13, say it, the Constitution of the United Republic shall guarantee that in the case of a shutdown, emergency funding shall be appropriate for all necessary functions of the federal government. Fantastic. Fight who? <laughs> The unified Cypriot state shall be called the United Republic of Cyprus, hereafter referred to as the United Republic. The United Republic shall only maintain a paramilitary force for the maintenance of public safety and security. The United Republic shall not maintain a standing army or military force. The head of state of the United Republic shall be vested in a president directly elected by all citizens of the United Republic for four-year terms. The European Commission shall appoint a special envoy to supervise and ensure the peaceful and orderly implementation of the peace process in this agreement. And I cannot in good faith endorse this treaty as it stands. There are various facets which would severely impede the creation of an effective government. The roll call vote in support or against the framework settlement. Republic of Cyprus. I wholeheartedly support this agreement. The Turkish Republic of Cyprus. Yes. The Republic of Turkey. Yes. The Hellenic Republic of Greece. Yay. The United Kingdom. I vote yes. The United Nations Security Council Representative. Yes. The United Nations Political Affairs. Yay. The United States. I'm standing. The European Union. Nay. The votes have been tallied. We have an agreement. What did you see as the biggest problems that you faced this weekend? I felt like I had a kind of hard position to play given the fact that I had troops in the country that nobody wanted there except for me. There was a lot of room for misunderstanding in anything that we wrote, anything that we spoke about, particularly just given the complexity of the situation. It was hard for me to gauge like the level of which I had to step in or kind of step back in order to let both parties uh, organically create a solution. Sometimes it's hard to embody the pathos of the ethnic divide or the particular realities of the cultural narrative that each side espouses. And so, you know, as rational beings without these ties, it's easier for us to come to a middle ground, per se. Yes, a united country would be great, but I wouldn't really be losing that much by not creating a united country. You know what? our issue so much as it is yours and I felt really uncomfortable making it about me for a minute. A lot of the discussion and a lot of the issues that came up were all due to miscommunication and I feel like that's a major theme, uh, really getting your ideas across clearly. Whether you're a delegate or a head delegate, it's about the team um, that's important Whether and you need a degree of centralization and then the division of labor, right? The one person in, in, in one role position is kind of fun, but I personally think it's nowhere as fun as being part of the team and moving forward together. Being a delegate, I concur with Kevin, is extremely fun, but the far bigger challenge is being part of the team. Communication, as Tony mentioned, delegates is one of the most crucial and difficult part of any negotiation. So be as forthcoming as you can, but also to clearly express interests rather than mere proposals. Don't be afraid to disrupt the negotiation if you think that things are going bad. The important thing is that we speak about for things that which are right. Okay? And this is not to, doesn't just go for today, this goes for the future delegates. Uh, our role, hopefully, is to make society better, to create a better situation for the future. There's no reason why a government system needs to take a certain form. And sometimes thinking outside of the box means in fact, thinking about what you have never seen before. Um, and I want to end by thanking uh, Mr. Eric Chung here for such a solo role. <laughs> and Mr. Ken Man Chow, who went all out as a delegate.